Well, if you haven't been able to tell by all the sleeping bags I have around me here, today's video is going to be about sleeping bags. And specifically, I wanted to discuss down versus synthetic insulation types. With fall right around the corner and colder temperatures on its way, I thought it'd be a great opportunity to do a deep dive into each insulation type. So for this video, I'll be breaking down what each insulation type is actually made of, some pros and cons of each, and my experience using both in the backcountry. So let's get started. talk about insulation when it comes to both sleeping bags and jackets, the two major types are down and synthetic. Now there are some hybrids or blends out there where you'll see down and synthetic mixed together, but I haven't had the chance to test or use any of these out in the field, so I won't be covering them in this video. So as for synthetic insulation, synthetic is a man-made material typically made from polyester. Down, on the other hand, is all natural. It's the plumage or material that you'll find under the feathers of either a duck or a goose, which brings up another great point. Down can be harvested from both ducks and geese. Now, I'm not an ornithologist, and hopefully I said that right, or someone who studies birds, but I've looked online at the differences between duck down versus goose down to see if there's any major differences and the only thing worth mentioning is that due to the size of the bird and geese being a little bit bigger, I believe that goose down has a little bit higher fill power and that it lofts a little bit better than duck down. So in your higher quality sleeping bags and jackets, you may see that they are more commonly filled with goose down than duck down. But other than that, the insulation types are pretty much the same. Another important note to bring up when it comes to down insulation is fill power. Fill power is a measurement of the loft that the down insulation has. And this can range anywhere between 450, which is the lowest, all the way up to 900, which is the highest. Now, what do these numbers mean? The number indicates the amount of cubic inches that one ounce of down fill will take up. So for example, one ounce of 450 fill down will take up 450 cubic inches, whereas one ounce of 900 down fill will take up 900 cubic inches. So why is this important? This number is important because it indicates the quality of down being used in the sleeping bag. So let's go back to that 900 versus 450 fill power example. A 900 fill power down sleeping bag is going to be much lighter weight than a 450 down fill power sleeping bag. And that's because it's going to require less materials to get to the desired temperature rating. The higher loft means that it's trapping more heat in the bag and it doesn't require as much material to get there. So now that we know what each insulation type is actually made of, let's go through and break down some pros and cons of each insulation type starting with synthetic. One of the biggest pros that I've found when it comes to synthetic insulation is the ability for synthetic material to maintain that insulation capability and keep you warm even when it gets wet. This is a major factor that should be taken into consideration if you do plan on hiking in a climate where you're expecting wet weather or you plan on going somewhere where you may be doing some deep river crossings. The fact that it's able to maintain that insulation and keep you warm even if it gets wet is a major plus when it comes to synthetic. Now another pro when it comes to synthetic insulation is the fact that it's non-allergenic. The last thing somebody wants to deal with when it comes to backpacking in the backcountry is allergies. So the fact that you don't have to worry about being allergic to any of the materials in a synthetic sleeping bag are definitely a pro for synthetic. Last but not least is price. Typically when you're shopping for either sleeping bags or jackets, you'll notice that synthetic materials are just a lot cheaper than down. So overall, the three biggest pros that I found with synthetic insulation is the fact that it's able to maintain that insulating capability when it's wet, it's non-allergenic, 
and it has a lower price point than down insulation. So let's move on to the cons. So one of the main cons I do have when it comes to synthetic insulation is the lack of compressibility. When it comes to compression, the synthetic insulation just does not compress nearly as well as down insulation. And this can be an issue when it comes to packing your bag and making sure you get everything to fit in there nicely. For me personally, when it comes to winter backpacking, this zero degree bag I have over next to me is just a pain in the butt to get compressed down to fit into my sleeping bag. Another major issue I have with synthetic insulation is weight. Overall, it requires more synthetic material to get to the same temperature rating that a down sleeping bag is capable of. So when you're shopping online or at a store for your sleeping bags, you'll typically notice that synthetic is overall heavier than down. That may be a major issue for you if you're somebody who cares about shedding every single ounce possible. So last but not least, when it comes to cons for synthetic insulation, I'm going with durability. When it comes to durability, synthetic insulation tends to break down quicker than down insulation does. The materials in synthetic just do not handle the compression as well as down insulation does. And you'll typically see that synthetic bags will break down quicker than down bags will. So overall, the three major cons I found with synthetic insulation was the lack of compressibility, the heavier weight, and the lower durability when compared to down insulation. So with that out of the way, let's break down the pros and cons with down insulation. So for me personally, one of the biggest pros when it comes to down insulation is the fact that it's really lightweight. Last year, I really made an effort to decrease my pack weight and I snagged this 20 degree down sleeping bag behind me. I believe to help me shed about a pound. So if you are somebody who's really concerned about your base weight and shedding every ounce, it's definitely a major factor that you should consider when you're looking at sleeping bags and jackets. Another really nice feature about down insulation is that it's able to compress so well. Ever since I snagged this down insulation bag behind me, I've noticed that I just have so much more room in my backpack for other gear or just more space in general. And that can be a huge plus for somebody that's going with a smaller bag out there, maybe like a 45 liter. You'll notice and definitely will need that extra space that down insulation can help you with. Another pro when it comes to down insulation is the fact that it's extremely durable. If you follow proper maintenance and storage procedures, you should expect a down sleeping bag to last you a good 10 or 15 years. The material is really able to handle that compression and expansion really well, and it just doesn't break down over time as quickly as synthetic will. Last but not least, and this one's important personally for me, it may not be as important for you guys depending on where you're backpacking, is the fact that down insulation really excels in cold and dry conditions. So the fact that we are a little bit up north here, and I do quite a bit of winter camping as of recently, is a huge reason why I flipped over to a down sleeping bag. It has really helped keep me warm in those cold, dry conditions when you're out backpacking in the wintertime. So overall, when it comes to pros, down insulation is extremely lightweight. It's really good at compressing. It's durable and it excels in cold and dry conditions. So let's move on to cons. So probably the most significant con you will run into when you talk about down insulation is water. Down insulation when it gets wet is pretty much useless. What happens is the insulation itself tends to mat together and it will no longer have that loft and therefore it won't be able to provide any of the insulating capabilities that you need and it won't be keeping you warm. It also tends to take a little while to dry out. So if you do plan on backpacking in any wet conditions or plan on doing any large creek crossings, either you may wanna consider synthetic or you need to make sure that you're keeping your down insulation in a dry sack. You really don't want this stuff to get wet. It will be a major problem for you. Last but not least, when it comes to down insulation is price. Overall, when you're shopping for either a sleeping bag or a jacket, you'll typically notice that down insulation is more expensive than synthetic. 
Now, this can be particularly important when it comes to somebody who might be new to backpacking. You know, if you're not sure if backpacking is going to be in it for the long haul for you, you're not sure if you're going to enjoy it, throwing down $200 for a sleeping bag might be really difficult to do. And personally, when I first started backpacking, everything I got was synthetic for that reason. I just wasn't sure if I was going to like it, and I didn't want to drop $200 on a bag. These two bags here were the first ones I picked up. This one is a 30 degree that was $60, and this is a zero degree that was $70. This down bag behind me that I just purchased last year was $200. So price point is a major issue when it comes to the insulation types. Overall, synthetic is gonna be significantly cheaper when it comes to price. So when it comes to down insulation, the two major cons that I have with it are that it doesn't hold its insulating capabilities when it gets wet and that it's typically more expensive than synthetic insulation. So that pretty much wraps it up for the pros and cons for both down and synthetic insulation types. That brings up the all important question and that's what insulation type is best? And the answer is, it really depends. It depends on the environment you plan on backpacking in. Are you gonna be backpacking in super wet conditions? Are you gonna be doing large creek crossings? Are you gonna be backpacking somewhere where the conditions are dry and you don't expect any rain? Are you somebody who cares about your base weight? Do you wanna be as ultra light as you can be? Or do you plan on being a weekend warrior where you're carrying 40 to 50 pounds on you? Do you have room in your backpack for synthetic or do you care about all the space that's in your pack? Are you somebody who carries a 45 liter pack and you just don't have much room to spare? The answer is it really just depends on all of these different scenarios and a lot of it's personal preference. Personally for me, I have three bags here with me. Two of them are synthetic, one of them's down and I use them all. I really thought I was gonna be moving it down permanently, but I still find that I do use my synthetic bags from time to time. All right, so overall, I really hope you guys enjoyed the video. Go ahead and comment down below and let me know what you guys think. I'd also love to hear back from you guys on what insulation types you guys prefer and what types of bags are you guys bringing out there in the backcountry with you. So until next time, I'll catch you guys later.